If you teach music online, you may have been using Zoom for a while now, but you don't know if your Zoom settings are actually optimized for teaching music online. Today, I'll be talking about how do I teach music online with Zoom, a tutorial for music teachers. We will cover my favorite settings and tips for audio, video, screen sharing, and general Zoom. Make sure to stay until the end because I'll also share my best tips and settings for group music classes online with Zoom. If you're just getting started teaching music online, make sure to grab my guide to get started teaching music online linked below. Hi there, my name is Katie Geddes and I'm an online music studio owner and teacher coach. I help music teachers build lives of freedom by building purposeful and profitable online music teaching businesses. So I know as a music teacher, your number one priority is audio quality. So let's start off right away by going through my Zoom settings for audio and my best tips for audio to teach music online with Zoom. Okay, so go ahead and pull up Zoom like you're going to join a regular meeting on Zoom. First thing, let's look at our audio settings. So we go down to our microphone here, click on this arrow, click on audio settings. So once you get here, first of all, when you get to your microphone, we do not want Zoom to adjust our audio volume for us. So definitely uncheck this part right here, automatically adjust microphone volume. And then when you have that unchecked, you can speak into your microphone until you see it at like 80 to 90% full. So we never want it to be like all the way up here at the top, but we definitely want our students to be able to hear us. Next, you also want to turn your suppressed background noise down to low because Zoom is going to try to take away any sound that you have in the background, but they might think that an instrument playing or a track playing in the background is background noise. So turn this down to low. Next of all, you may have to click like an advanced button here or something, but you should see this option, show in meeting option to enable original sound. So check that. What this is going to do is original sound basically is whatever your microphone is picking up. So Zoom tries to change the way that our sound um, is when it comes into the call. They're trying to optimize it for us, but it's not set up for music. So we want just whatever sound is coming in through our microphone, especially if you have a nice external microphone, to be the original sound. Also go ahead and check these three options as well. These are just gonna further improve your audio quality. So once you have added this into your Zoom options, you actually have to enable it. So whenever you go into your Zoom call, there should be an option up here now. My original sound is on. So if you saw original sound off, you just have to click this and turn it on and then now it'll pick up your original sound. Let's also talk about some tips for your audio using Zoom. First of all, you may know by now that Zoom is not set up for music lessons. It is really set up for just speaking. So. The way that the Zoom settings typically work is that if you try to cut each other off or interject in a conversation, then you will not hear both parties. One way to help this is to wear headphones when you are teaching. This way you can hear your student when they're talking and your interjections will be heard better. I personally have done this in the past and it helped quite a lot. I don't actually do it anymore just because I do teach for such long periods of time that it actually starts to hurt my ears. But I do know with myself and with other music teachers that it does help with the interjection issues. Also, Zoom tends to have a delay. So because of the time it takes for sound just to travel through the internet, this is something that's inevitable. It's always gonna happen. So this applies to if you were going to try to accompany your students or play like a play along track in the background, there's gonna be some sort of a delay and it's not gonna line up with your student playing along. So what would be better is to teach your student how to play the audio on their side. So if you send them a track beforehand, that way they can set it up with an iPhone, an iPad or a speaker, and they can play it from their side of Zoom so that both their audio and their play along audio will be coming from the same side of the Zoom call. Are you wondering what kind of equipment I use in my own online music classroom? I'll be coming out with a video shortly that is my entire classroom setup for my online music music classroom, make sure to hit the subscription button below so that you won't miss that video. All right, so next let's look at some video settings and my best video tips for teaching music online with Zoom. Okay, so another thing that I know a lot of teachers want to do is add a second screen into their Zoom call. So this is really quick and easy. Let me show you what I usually do. I go into participants, then I go to invite, I go to email and I do default email. 
Once it's loaded, it should look something like this, or it might just have a pop-up menu for you. So then I'm gonna send this to myself. Hit send. Then I just got an email on my phone, so I'm gonna click and open that. Make sure that you have the actual Zoom app on your phone, and then you can connect. One tip that you should remember though is make sure you do not join audio on your phone or on your second device, because then there'll be a lot of crazy echoing sounds that you do not want to happen. So say no audio, you enable your camera, and now you should have a second device hooked up to your screen. So here I am three times for you. <laughs> if your second device is gonna be a phone, I highly recommend buying one of these. This is just like a clip-on stand that I use for my iPhone and I connect it to the side of my desk like this. And then I can add my phone to this stand. I clip it on and then I have my second screen. So for me, I use this a lot for my GarageBand classes. If I was gonna use it for a guitar class, I would just set up the camera angle differently so that it would catch my hand, my fretting hand, or my um, plucking my fingers. One other tip that you may find to be useful is within your video settings. So I go down to my camera to this arrow here, go to video settings, and I always use this, touch up my appearance. I know that it does not help the video quality, but I find it to be really helpful if I haven't put myself together that day and I really wanna still look nice for my students. You don't wanna pull it up too high because then you'll just be totally blurred out, but somewhere in the middle is usually where I keep it. You can also adjust for your low light, so you can do auto or you can do it manually where you make it brighter like this which really helps the video as well. My favorite of these settings is the touch up appearance because I am not a morning person and sometimes I roll out of bed right before my lessons. So it's kind of like an Instagram filter. It helps me a lot. Speaking of Instagram, if you don't already follow me, make sure to go and follow me now. I give tons of online music teacher tips in my stories and my posts every day. Next, let's talk about screen sharing, settings, and tips for teaching music online with Zoom. Okay, so when we're doing screen share, there's quite a few different options that we have here. If you go to the advanced option, you'll see that there's computer audio. If you click on this, it's not gonna share your actual screen. It's just gonna play any audio that you have in your background. So this is the best way to share audio usually if I'm trying to play a certain song for my students that they were gonna try to learn on the guitar or we're going to try to replicate on GarageBand or something. I will always share it with the computer sound because it's just the best quality that you are going to get through Zoom. If you don't share your audio that way, then your students are really just going to hear whatever audio is coming out through your microphone. So they're either not going to hear it at all or the quality is just going to be really low. Another tip that I have for screen sharing is that you can actually share more than one thing at a time. So for example, if I had a song up and I wanted to share the song and I wanted to share a computer screen or something like that, I could click and then say shift and click another and just say enter and it'll share both of those things, which is really nice. Screen sharing will be so helpful for any music teacher when they're sharing sheet music. I also use it to share the curriculum that I've created in Canva that I use with my students. This is something that I encourage all teachers to try to do to create their own curriculum. I talk about this all the time with my coaching clients. If you are ever interested in learning more about my coaching packages, then just head to katiegettis.com to learn more. I also sell my curriculum on Teachers Pay Teachers. There are so many resources there for guitar and ukulele students. So I'll make sure to link our shop in the description box below. And finally, let's just talk about some general settings and tips that I have for teaching music online with Zoom. First of all, when you are trying to change your microphone, you can go to your microphone here, click on the arrow, and you can select your microphone. So you'll see that I selected my Blue Snowball instead of my built-in microphone. You can do the same thing for video as well. So if you have a separate webcam like I do, rather than the one that's built into your laptop, then you can select it there. Or if you wanna have a second screen using another webcam instead of calling in your phone or your iPad like I did today, then you could set it up here as well. Also some really cool tools that you can do in Zoom. Let's say I'm gonna share my screen with the song slide that I created here. I could show the slide and share the sound, which you could do for like a video or something like that, but I'm just gonna share the actual slide here right now. So first of all, I'm gonna change my view to single page. So it comes up like this instead. So what you can do is come down here to this toolbar and you can click on annotate and it'll bring up more options here like this. 
So one thing that I really like is the spotlight feature. So you can say spotlight and then it'll show where your cursor is as you're going through. So if you're trying to guide your students through some chords or something like this, then you can just move your cursor as you're going through a song. Another thing that's really nice is being able to draw. So I might wanna circle something and say, we need to work on this chord or we need to work on this part of our pattern or you're forgetting not to play this string, anything like that. You can draw, you can annotate, you can write things, which is really helpful. In addition to drawing on this as well, I can also save something that I've drawn. So let's say, for example, I wanted to type in, so let's say text, let's say I wanted to type in P-I-M-A, and then again, put that over here, P-I-M-A. Maybe I want to do that over and over and over and over and over again. After I've done that through the whole song, I can say save and I can do it as a PNG or as a PDF. So let's say I want to do it as a PDF. So now if you show in Finder, you'll see it's right here. I could rename that so that I could send it to my student if I really wanted them to remember something that we talked about in our lesson. Another really helpful feature, of course, in Zoom is to use the chat box. So you just go to this chat option here and you can share a link here if you want and send it a, a link to your student, then they could click and open something. What I do in my group classes, which is really fun, is as someone is performing, I have students send chat messages of what they feel like that student is doing really well in their song. So you could say, your finger picking sounds beautiful. And then they could share that with the class. And of course, one other really helpful feature is to record your lessons. You click this record button here. I don't use that just because my platform records them for us and they upload them for us to share with the students. But if you are doing online teaching independently, then you could always record and send your students their lessons after class so they can continue to practice with the recording. And just a few more tips that I have for just general Zoom. Number one, make sure to get the actual app don't use Zoom through a browser, use it with the actual app. It just works so much better that way. Second of all, make sure you always have a great internet connection. Your internet speed is going to change your experience with Zoom immensely. It's very, very important. Number three, I always recommend testing out Zoom before you use it in your first classroom experience. You wanna feel comfortable with all of the different settings and tools and tricks that you can use within the Zoom call so that in that first lesson, you don't feel overwhelmed with the tech side of things when you're trying to work with that student for the first time. Number four, an external microphone helps so much. I highly recommend this, especially for music teachers. I'll definitely link some suggested microphones in the description box below, a combo of some more affordable ones and some ones with just some great reviews. And number five, another great way to assess your students' progress so far with a piece is really to get them to video record themselves playing a piece before the Zoom call and have them send that video to you so that you can watch and listen through the video instead of through the Zoom call. That's not to say that you won't have them perform in the Zoom call ever. I have my students do that with me all the time, but if you really wanna get the best idea of how they're really sounding, then I would definitely recommend having them video record it before your class. Okay, so far those are my audio, video, screen sharing, and general Zoom tips that I have for you today. Did I miss anything? Comment below and let me know some of your favorite Zoom tips and tricks for music teachers. Let me know any suggestions that you might have of your own. Finally, I know that I promised a bonus tip. Let's talk about how to teach music online with Zoom in group lessons. Here are some of my biggest tips for group lessons. First of all, and this one might sound a little bit weird, especially for a music class, I highly recommend you mute your students in a group class setting. As we've talked about so far, Zoom is not set up for interjecting or having multiple people speaking or performing at once. So I definitely recommend muting all of your students and leaving yourself unmuted for your class. This way they can also kind of experiment with what you're learning throughout class without disturbing any of your other students. So since you won't be able to hear your students, you have to have a way to check in with them, right? So what I do is a lot of nonverbal feedback. Some examples of this are thumbs up, thumbs in the middle, and thumbs down. In my classroom, I say thumbs up if you're feeling really confident, thumb in the middle if you understand but you feel like you need some more practice, and then thumbs down is I don't understand or I have a question or I need some help. I also will do fingers one through five, one being I'm feeling really weak on this piece, five being I feel so confident, and I'll assess that way as a group to see how we're doing as a group with a song, right? Like how much more time might we need to practice that song? And that really just opens up an invitation for students to pause and ask questions. So of course, if a student ever has a question or they just raise their hand throughout class, that student individually will be unmuted and that way they can ask their question or they can demonstrate something for me 
so that that way I can check in with them and I can address their concerns. Also, whenever I'm teaching a new concept, I'll also go around and usually unmute my students one by one. So if we're learning a new chord, for example, I'll, I'll go through and have the students unmute so I can hear each one of them play that chord. Because even sometimes if the students are feeling really confident, they may not be totally accurate. So it's always good to check in on new concepts as well. And of course, we always unmute for performances. I allow space in my classroom for kiddos to perform if they would like to. So of course they would unmute for a situation like that. I would spotlight their video and they would play for the class. My last tip for group lessons through Zoom is make sure that you always keep your students in gallery view. So this way you can see every one of your students' faces. Especially when you go to share your screen, you have to adjust to make sure you can still see all of your students even when you are showing them a slide or a piece of music. I also recommend when you are doing that, that throughout a group class, you spotlight your own video. So if they are in gallery view as a student, they don't see all of their other students throughout the class. They always see you so that whenever you're demonstrating something, they'll see what you're demonstrating and they can follow along with your modeling. Are you interested in hoping group classes alongside your private lesson students? I teach both group and private lessons on a platform called OutSchool, which has brought me over 800 students in the last year and a half. If you're interested in learning more about OutSchool, then definitely check this video out next where I talk all about this platform, how I found success there, and just some pros and cons of working for that platform. All right, so at this point, you understand some Zoom settings and tips for audio, video, screen sharing, general Zoom, and for group classes through Zoom. Hopefully you're feeling a little bit more confident about the tech side of things, and you're ready to get started teaching music online if you haven't already. If this video was helpful for you, make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscription button below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.